This is another sign of the times, an analysis and a commentary. Permafrost warming, scientists say. Scientists are struggling to understand one of the biggest looming mysteries about the future of the Earth. Experts have long known that northern lands were a storehouse of frozen carbon locked up in the form of leaves, roots, and other organic matter trapped in icy soil, a mix that, when thawed, can produce methane and carbon dioxide, gases that trap heat and warm the planet. But they have been stunned in recent years to realize just how much organic debris is there. A recent estimate suggests that the perennially frozen ground known as permafrost, which underlies nearly a quarter of the northern hemisphere, contains twice as much carbon as the entire atmosphere. Temperatures are warming across much of that region, primarily, scientists believe, because of the rapid human release of greenhouse gases. Permafrost is warming too. Some has already thawed, and other signs are emerging that the frozen carbon may be destabilizing. It's like broccoli in your freezer, said Kevin Schaefer, a scientist at the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado. As long as the broccoli stays in the freezer, it's going to be okay, but once you take it out of the freezer and put it in the fridge, it will thaw out and eventually decay. If a substantial amount of the carbon should enter the atmosphere, it would intensify the planetary warming. An especially worrisome possibility is that a significant proportion will emerge not as carbon dioxide, the gas that usually forms when organic material breaks down, but as methane, produced when the breakdown occurs in lakes or wetlands. Methane is especially potent at trapping the sun's heat, and the potential for large new methane emissions in the Arctic is one of the biggest wild cards in climate science. Scientists have declared that understanding the problem is a major priority. The United States Department of Energy and the European Union recently committed to new projects aimed at doing so, and NASA is considering a similar plan, but researchers say the money and people devoted to the issue are still minimal compared with the risk. For now, scientists have many more questions than answers. Preliminary computer analyses made only recently suggest that the Arctic and sub-Arctic regions could eventually become an annual source of carbon equal to 15% or so of today's yearly emissions from human activities. But those calculations were deliberately cautious. A recent survey drew on the expertise of 41 permafrost scientists to offer more informal projections. They estimated that if human fossil fuel burning remained high and the planet warmed sharply, the gases from permafrost could eventually equal 35% of today's annual human emissions. The experts also said that if humanity began getting its own emissions under control soon, the greenhouse gases emerging from permafrost could be kept to a much lower level, perhaps equivalent to 10% of today's human emissions. Even at the low end, these numbers mean that the long-running international negotiations over greenhouse gases are likely to become more difficult, with less room for countries to continue burning large amounts of fossil fuels. In the minds of most experts, the chief worry is not that the carbon and the permafrost will break down quickly. Typical estimates say that it will take more than a century, perhaps several, but that once the decomposition starts, it will be impossible to stop. Even if it's 5 or 10 percent of today's emissions, it's exceptionally worrying, and 30 percent is humongous said a scientist in Australia who runs a global program to monitor greenhouse gases. It will be a chronic source of emissions that will last hundreds of years. A troubling trend has emerged recently. Wildfires are increasing across much of the north, and early research suggests that extensive burning could lead to a more rapid thaw of permafrost. At the peak of the Ice Age 20,000 years ago, Frozen ground was more extensive than today, stretching deep into parts of the lower 48 states that were not covered by ice sheets. Climate change 
contrarians like to point to that history, contending that any melting of permafrost and ice sheets today is simply the tail end of the ice age, citing permafrost temperatures for northern Alaska, which, though rising rapidly, remain well below freezing, an organization called the Center for the Study of Carbon Dioxide and Global Change claimed that permafrost is in no more danger of being wiped out any time soon than it was in the days of our great-grandparents. But mainstream scientists, while hoping the breakdown of permafrost will indeed be slow, reject that argument. They say the climate was reasonably stable for the past 10,000 years or so during the period when human civilization arose. But now, as people burn immense amounts of carbon in the form of fossil fuels, the planet's temperature is rising, and the Arctic is warming twice as fast. That, scientists say, puts the remaining permafrost deposits at risk. For several decades, researchers have been monitoring permafrost temperatures in hundreds of boreholes across the north. The temperatures have occasionally decreased in some regions for periods as long as a decade. But the overall trend has been a relentless rise, with temperatures now increasing fastest in the most northerly areas. Thawing has been most notable at the southern margins, across huge areas including much of central Alaska. Permafrost is hovering just below the freezing point and is expected to start thawing in earnest as soon as the 2020s northern Alaska and northern Siberia, where permafrost is at least 12 degrees Fahrenheit below freezing, experts say it should take longer. Even in a greenhouse warmed world, it will still get cold and dark in the Arctic in the winter, said the director of the Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder. Scientists need better inventories of the ancient carbon. The best estimate so far was published in 2009 by a Canadian scientist. It was found that there was about 1.7 trillion tons of carbon in soils of the northern regions, about 88% of it locked in permafrost. That is about two and a half times the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. A leading French scientist wrote at the time that he was stunned by the estimate, a large upward revision from previous calculations. If, in a warmer world, Bacteria decompose organic soil matter faster, releasing carbon dioxide. This will set up a positive feedback loop, speeding up global warming. When organic material comes out of the deep freeze, it is consumed by bacteria. If the material is well aerated, bacteria that breathe oxygen will perform the breakdown, and the carbon will enter the air as carbon dioxide, the primary greenhouse gas. But in areas where oxygen is limited, like the bottom of a lake or wetland, a group of bacteria called methanogens will break down the organic material and the carbon will emerge as methane. Scientists are worried about both gases. They believe that most of the carbon will emerge as carbon dioxide, with only a few percent of it being converted to methane. But because methane is such a potent greenhouse gas, 41 experts in the recent survey predicted it would trap about as much heat as a carbon dioxide would. Permafrost that is frozen hard supports the ground surface, almost the way a concrete pillar supports a building. But when thaw begins, the ground sometimes turns to mush and the entire land surface collapses into a low-lying area known as a thermokarst. A lake or wetland can form there the dark surface of the water capturing the sun's heat and causing still more permafrost to thaw nearby. Near thermokarst locations, trees often lean crazily because their roots are disturbed by the rapid changes in the underlying landscape, creating drunken forests, and the thawing as it feeds on itself frees up more and more ancient plant debris. One recent day in 11 degree weather Dr. Walter Anthony and an assistant, Amy Strom, dragged equipment onto two frozen thermokarst lakes near Fairbanks. The fall had been unusually warm and the ice was thin, emitting thunderous cracks, but it held. In spots, methane bubbled so vigorously 
It had prevented the ice from freezing. Dr. Walter Anthony had already run chemical tests on the methane from one of the lakes, dating the carbon molecules within the gas to 30,000 years ago. It was in the freezer for 30 to 40,000 years, and now the freezer door is open. Scientists are not sure yet whether thermokarst lakes will become more common throughout the Arctic in a warming climate, a development that could greatly accelerate permafrost thaw and methane production. But they have already started to see increases in some regions, including northernmost Alaska. We expect increased thermokarst activity could be a very strong effect, but we don't really know, said another scientist at the University of Alaska, Fairbanks. With this kind of work still in the early stages, researchers are worried that the changes in the region may already be outrunning their ability to understand them or to predict what will happen. In other words, they don't really know exactly what's going on. Up to now, the Arctic has been absorbing carbon on balance and was once expected to keep doing so throughout this century, but recent Analyses suggest that the permafrost thaw could turn the Arctic into a net source of carbon, possibly within a decade or two, and those studies do not account for fire. I maintain that the fastest way you're going to lose permafrost and release permafrost carbon to the atmosphere is increasing fire frequency, said a University of Florida scientist. It's a rapid and catastrophic way you could completely change everything. The essential question scientists need to answer is whether the many factors they do not yet understand could speed the release of carbon from permafrost or possibly slow it more than they expect. For instance, nutrients released from thawing permafrost could spur denser plant growth in the Arctic and the plants would take up some carbon dioxide. Conversely, should fires race across warming northern landscapes, immense amounts of organic material and vegetation, soils, peat deposits, and thawed permafrost could burn. A University of Florida researcher who has done extensive fieldwork in Alaska is worried by the changes he already sees, including the discovery that carbon buried since before the dawn of civilization is now escaping. To me, it's a spine-tingling feeling. If it's really old carbon that hasn't been in the air for a long time, and now it's entering the air, he said, that's the fingerprint of a major disruption, and we aren't going to be able to turn it off someday. So, in other words, the melting of the permafrost could produce even more climate change in the future. This, too, is another sign of the times, the end times, transition days, which is a time of extraordinary happenings changes and events. It's also about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. Again, Revelation chapter 10 verse 5. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven. 6. And swore by him that lives forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as is declared to his servants, the prophets. Yes, the time is now. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered. It's also called fate or destiny. And these are more signs. The tipping points or limits are being reached. 